Welcome to Graham Kerr's Kitchen. It's really two programmes in one. This is a series that appeals to your creative side. Food that is sumptuous stuff. How could that be? Uh, this is a programme about people who want to eat healthy and reduce calories. Actually, it's about food with an aromatic quality that fills the nose. Oh, sure. But it's also about keeping my arteries clean by reducing fat. But it doesn't mean a thing if the food isn't rich and colourful. Maximise the flavour. OK, but I must have healthy food that I can cook in minutes. I must minimise the risk. So welcome to Graham Kerr's Kitchen, where we get our heads together just for you. And uh, a, a true welcome to the patriotic wardrobe as well. Uh, it doesn't have much to do with the food, but anyway. Um, what we'll do is we'll do a little basic technique, first of all, and then wrap a, an interesting and very simple recipe around it. And then we'll get a bit more complicated and uh, springboard that idea into something which actually works and I hope will work for your family as well, very much. Especially if your family is the sort of people or are the sort of people that you actually have to reduce the calories and fats for because they're at some risk. If you know that, then that's what we're all about. Minimise the risk for them and then maximise the flavour so that you can still please them. Yeah. OK, well, here's an interesting uh, little thought here. Um, if you, uh, it's called naked breast syndrome, it's perfectly all right, um, it's called NBS. And what I've got is, if you have a, a breast of chicken and it has a layer of fat on top of it, and you submit that to what we call broiling heat, which is radiant heat, or if you fry that, and it's still radiant heat, or if you roast it from around the outside, which is still radiant heat, then you really need to leave the skin on. But if you're actually going to put that into what we call moist heat, and you make a casserole out of it, and surra where it's surrounded by moisture, and the fat leaks out into the moisture, then really the skin has to come off before. And it really is important, because you see here, the breast of chicken has 189 calories in it. When the skin is taken off, it's got 147. That's 9 grams of fat down to 4 grams of fat. And the size is even more, 215 to 174 and 13 down to 8. So we're going to save a lot by actually taking the skin off at the right time so that we don't actually spoil people's enjoyment of it. Come through and I'll show you how it works. Good. <laughs> I'm standing here minding my own business thinking, gosh, this is nice, you know. I mean, I'm feeling all kind of cool. Very well. Are you ready? Good. Um, just a couple of, <laughs> couple of little uh, spots of oil, just a teaspoonful in each of those pans, and uh, the front one first. And um, in that front one, I just want to do a little experiment with you. This is the NDS thing. Um, and I call it the naked breast syndrome largely because of the problem I'm having with people who, if you see this, We've got a breast uh, with the skin intact. You can't find that in supermarkets nowadays because they strip off the skin and say, look, haven't we done a wonderful job for you? Um, but unfortunately, that doesn't necessarily result in a good um, cooking experience. So just wipe it around in that oil, first of all, drop that down into the pan. And this one, you see, that I wipe around in exactly the same way, this one, fat side down, skin side down, they're both from the same bird, so we've got it as, as, a, as good a, you know, a technique as I can possibly make. And um, just wipe that off. You know. you know what we're like now. We're just going to keep that as clean as possibly can. All right. And I've got some spiral. I'm just going to cut them side by side. And let's see what they look like in about eight, nine minutes' time. All right. Spiral pasta. Um, that's, uh, drop that into freshly boiling water. About one cupful um, that goes in this dish. It's a spiral shape, and you see them everywhere, so that's not an unusual thing at all. Just to stir them. Hey, hey! <laughs> just another way of just, sorry, just a little way of disturbing the pasta. And um, so you just disturb it so that it doesn't all stick to the bottom of the pan, just to sort of roll it around. And you can put a lid on the top to get it boiling quickly, but I didn't need to with that amount. Just that small amount of pasta comes very well. This is really more of a garnish within it. About an eighth teaspoonful of salt and just let that go. That takes about eight minutes, which is rather fortunate, isn't it? Okay, 
So let's turn our attention to legs and to a casserole. Now, this is radiant heat that's just coming up here. Now, we'll test that one. But um, in, in, in fact, I need to get just a bit more heat underneath that one there up to about um, medium height. Now, here are some um, legs and thighs, right? And they've got the skin on them. But in this case, because it's radiant heat that I want to do, I don't want to casserole it in the dish. I want to cook it separately. So I've got 350 degree Fahrenheit oven, about 180 degrees centigrade, and just whip it into the top, open the bottom one. <laughs> I always love that. And um, then here's the bottom bit, and take those out. Now they're, they're just done, and they are at what you might call a, over, a hundred and, uh, um, over 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the government says 180 degrees Fahrenheit would be safe, and, and I don't want to argue with the government, truly. But, I mean, you, it's a pretty sad chicken, you know, when it's up to 180. So if we go to 165, any organism killed at 140. So you've got a little bit of a, a leeway there. And, but a good, good thermometer will help you to make sure you don't make any mistakes. Now, what I've done there, I just wanted to show you that, because when those are cooked, you see the grease that comes off them underneath. When they come out of the oven and they're sizzling hot, Get a piece of, um, <laughs> uh, get uh, some iced water. I'm not going to try this because those are too hot. They'll just let them go down for a moment or two. And then strip it quickly by simply putting your hands into the ice water and back again. I'm not going to kid you. This one is cold, so I mean, uh, I can handle this one all right. But it, it, it is helpful. Anything that you see by way of fat, just uh, discard, bring to one side. Um, that's the whole idea of doing it this way, is to reduce the amount of fat content. And then just pull it apart. Look how wonderful that is. How it's succulent. It comes apart. Because it had the skin on it. And this is my, my, my main claim, is that if you cook things without the skin on it, they dry out, you know. It becomes stringy and fibrous, whether it's moist heat or otherwise. So this way, I've got the the value of all of that delicious mm, you know, succulence that comes into there. I've got to clean my hands a bit. And the, it, it just makes it roll around the tongue. You've got the maximum amount left behind, yet you've drained the fat off it at the same time. Good. Okay, now into this pan here, we've got uh, just a couple of onions, and uh, drop those down in there, and raise the heat up under that fiddle. And shoot that around, just to be able to break out a sweat with it oh, come back in the pan here. Just stir that around. Whilst that's doing, just uh, flop over the chicken breast once again. You see how nice that one looks there? Now, this one tears a little bit when it's um, in that pan. You have to put a lot of fat in when you cook without that uh, chicken breast. All right, we'll see what it looks like at the end. Um, now, two cloves of garlic and just pound those down until they're just flattened and drop those on top of the onion and then some of this tomato paste which is a, a principle called the Maillard reaction. This is one of the techniques that I've done in this series. So if you haven't caught up with it yet, you might see it on another time around. And it's no, it's no or low sodium, no added sodium. Look, look for it. It's a little bit of a, a print on the bottom of the, of the can. And stir that around together. And that should start to darken. And the smell of both the tomato and the garlic and the onion is coming up all around. It's just sensational. Now, this is, this is a sun choke. I don't know if you've seen one of these at all. But... Yeah, you might have seen it. It's called a Jerusalem artichoke. Well, the word Jerusalem has nothing to do with the city. Um, in fact, it means um, girasole. Girasole is to gyrate to the sun. And it's like a sunflower. And, the, and, and it just follows it round, like some people, you know, like that, when the sun comes out, especially around this part of the world. And so these are placed in with uh, that tomato paste and all begin to mingle with this, and it's a fabulous flavor. Now, on top of that, you then put a couple of cups of tomato paste. And, uh, to <laughs> that's ridiculous. If it was tomato paste, you wouldn't be able to see through it. That's chicken stock, of course. And stir it in. Now, that, that slightly caramel tomato, which has come up with the 
with, you know, you, you, you're smelling it, um, with the garlic and the onions stirred in. It's got a great color. With that, a tablespoonful of oregano, uh, oreganos, oregano, oregano, if you like. And um, if you can make that fresh, it is better. It's still all right dried, but it's better if it's fresh. Okay, now, those are all going. Now, after that has been, oh, just one cup of wine, that's it. Just um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of dealkalized white wine, not a sweet one, uh, a dry white wine. And um, a little pepper in the top of that, and then just uh, lift the lid, and that's what it looks like after it's been cooking for about um, eight to 12 minutes. You can test it by how just bang on those little, um, those little sun checks are. They shouldn't be too crispy, but I don't want them kind of sagging, you know. They're not supposed to look nasty. I mean, they're supposed to look great. Then you take all of that chicken, and, and remember, that's the thigh meat, so it, it really has the succulence to it, which is just fabulous. And then 36, <laughs> oh, you don't have to count them up. It's actually a cup full of, of um, medium-sized black olives. Pop them in. Yes, I hear a deep intake of breath, but surely, Graham, they're so fattening. Well, they're five calories each, and if that knocks you out, that's about 45 calories a portion, so don't, uh, don't worry too much about that. Cut them down a little bit, if you like. And then the pasta, just simply strain that when it's had its eight minutes, and uh, toss it out. <laughs> they stuck to the bottom. <laughs> so glad you came. There we go. And then that, with that at perfect al dente point, just strain them a little bit and, uh, and just turn them in. Okay, good. Um, now, right at the last moment, just take another little bit of the oregano and just sprinkle it onto the top. Great. And we'll serve it up. Now, in, in that pan in front of me, I've got the two uh, breasts which are just sort of um, cracking away there. And I, I want to be able to get to them, but look how magnificent that is. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Great looking dish. And here in the pan, these two uh, breasts here, when they come out, this is the point at which I would take the skin off that breast on the other side. Look at the two, would you please? This one is plumper and has more moisture in it than this one, which I hope proves that point. Okay, let's have a look. Clean the side of the plate. Ooh, don't you look good? That, it's, it's, it's um, a study in ambers, um, just a gorgeous, you know, if you like black olives, you're really going to like that one. It's really super. Okay, so I think we've proven the point about how, you know, you've got to leave the, the skin on here and how you can take the skin off on the other way. And let me show you what happens to the numbers <coughs> when that actually happens. I call this Fantango, by the way. Um, the original classic is a Marengo, um, a chicken Marengo. 520, so we've dropped the calories a little bit. Um, 15 grams of fat, so we've really cut down on that. Three um, are of saturated fat. That gives me 26%, which is under the 30%, you know, which I try and paint myself into. And 85 milligrams of cholesterol. <clears throat> and the sodium is down to 599. It's come up a bit because of the olives. And the fiber is up. Ah, good stuff. Um, up to seven. Now, big thing, of course, is no matter how you extol the virtues of everything in the human language, it's when you get it onto your palate. Oh, that is such a, a charming. Mm. Oh, oh, try the sun chucks and the olives, and the whole thing balances out just perfectly. Right? That's minimum risk and maximum flavor at the same time. Okay? Now, springboard. The idea, the whole thing about this skin over time. Well, I'm going to take a turkey, a breast of turkey, and cook it on a bed of root vegetables that is going to perfume that breast of turkey in a way that I have never tasted in the whole of my life. I mean, it is just sensational. So, ready for this? Okay. Call it, it's called friendly turkey, <laughs> like me. Right.
just think that would make a great title of the show, you know, The Friendly Turkey. I mean, if you, you watch that in TV Guide, you know, you'd really know it, wouldn't you? Anyway, okay. Um, a little bit of oil, um, uh, my favourite sort of one teaspoonful of oil, not to drown the whole thing. And um, then uh, an onion here, well, actually, um, two large onions cut in quarters. And uh, so that you've got plenty of onion here, and they've got to be in nice large fat slices, like so. And um, bring the heat up in the pan so it's about medium high, and then just drop those down into the. They'll colour a little bit, and uh, that's what we want. Okay, um, this. <laughs> Are you aware of what that is? It's not a, a sort of anemic carrot. That, that is, in fact, a parsnip. And I like parsnips, which are nice, young, and tender parsnips. Uh, when you've peeled them on the outside, they've, they've got a lovely, creamy, soft inside. And um, these can be cut then um, diagonally or straight across or up and down or whatever you like, but just get them small enough so as to be able to get into the dish. And um, then on top of those, I actually need four of those parsnips. So these are hacked up just the same as the others. And um, just drop those in. Now, I, I know, I know, because, you know, I have, you know, the, the taste buds and everything to go with all of this, that I have never, ever in my whole life tasted a piece of turkey as friendly as this one. It isn't just user-friendly, it is wonderful. And when you see the numbers, it's amazing how friendly it can be. Okay. So, parsnips, a little sweet taste, and then the onion in there. Now, potatoes. This is a whole dish all in one. Uh, potatoes, uh, red skin potatoes, little small new red skin potatoes, nice and yellow in the center here. And uh, that can be dropped down into the pan. We've got 12 of those and just uh, settle those down in it as well. Then, uh, here is something, this is what makes the dish, frankly. It's the aromatic quality of it. Here is rosemary. This is a branch of fresh rosemary. But if you can't get fresh stuff, then the dried, it actually dries very well. About a tablespoonful will do. And then a teaspoonful of thyme. This is fresh thyme here. If you can possibly, you know, um, get to fresh herbs, then get to them uh, rather than dried ones. I prefer it, but you can back up on it. Okay. Now, when that sizzled a little bit, then you get a can, just a straight can, whip the top off, and pour it in of chicken stock, and there you'll find that's just enough to be able to layer it. And when you see what it looks like when it's cooked, it's just incredible. Um, now, oh. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. I'll pick it up later. Um, now, um, a little bit of pepper. Well, it, it, it saves, doesn't it, having huge garbage cans, and, uh, so, and, and it shouldn't be put out with garbage anyway. It can be recycled. Great stuff. But take the label off and recycle the paper. <laughs> um, so one-eighth teaspoonful of, of um, salt with the pepper, and that's all ready to go. Okay, now, here's the really neat thing, and this is where we get to this whole business of what do you do with the skin. Now, here, with the skin, I simply detach it at the thin end of the breast and then pull it forward. For some extraordinary reason, um, it comes off so much easier that way. All right? Now put that down on one side and then go round the outside here looking for any serious amounts of fat. And I mean, you, you can see it very clearly. Just trim it all off, leave the flesh behind, but just trim it all the way around the outside. Okay, good. Oh, there's a little bit there. That's really not fat, that's so much a sinew. And a little bit of fat here. <laughs> Good, okay. Now, set that to one side. This is where it's different. You lay out the breast, um, the skin, that we took off, like so, and then get a sharp knife and just simply um, run it over the top at an angle. I don't want to cut through the skin, but I do want to get the surplus fat. This happens to be a very good one. Off the underneath part of that skin. I want to get it all off and away. And then to one side. Now, when you do that, and you cook it by this moist heat method, you can then uh, reassemble it. So it's this sort of the original skin graft all over again. Down here for some salt and pepper. And... Uh, just a little freshly ground salt over the top. Now, that's not going to penetrate very far, but it is going to make a marvellous outside sort of crustiness to it. And a little bit of the salt, too. Not much. And then just drape that skin. <laughs> Imagine, 
you know, surgeons cost thousands of dollars for doing the same sort of thing. Madam, you look terrific. Um, there we go. So it's all, all done and ready to then just lift up like that, or sir, sorry, I shouldn't have just said madam, I, forgive me for that, and just drop it down on top. So now it's on a bed of roots which have the, the smell of the rosemary, aroma of the rosemary, coming wafting up through those roots and everything else. It's just, I mean, it's just out of sight what that does to the moisture of that, of that breath. And you see, because you've got all the fat scraped off the skin, the skin will protect it from going, you know, skin protects the moisture inside, but it doesn't contribute a whole load of fat to the vegetables and everything else. Great. Good. Then um, uh, the oven set at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 180 degrees centigrade. That's the sort of standard temperature for me for roasting. Put it in there, it takes 50 minutes. That's not bad, is it, really? And then just slip it out. This is the one that's done. And um, get a, a meat thermometer uh, of it. There's some new ones now that you actually plug into the side of the oven and then into the breast of turkey. And then you just tap out the temperature that you want on the top here. And when it gets to that temperature, it just turns itself off, which is terrific. Now, I put 165 when you know what temperature it is. One of the troubles is that, um, you know, we've had to assume that we don't know what temperature is sometimes because, um, you know, we don't have very accurate thermometers. And so they have put it up to a temperature which is more than it should be. Ha! I did that. I, did that. <laughs> I nearly put the cooked chicken breast onto that thing where I'd actually cooked a raw one, so that wouldn't have been a good idea at all. See? Take the skin off. Put it in the pot, keep that for a stock later on, still got some goodness left in it, and we're ready to be able to carve. So, um, just carve it um, uh, in this lovely thick slices here, just a couple of thick slices through, and it is beautifully tender. I mean, just so tender. Great stuff. And here is the, 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 the vegetables are doing nicely here. And with just one, a couple of tablespoons full of an arrowroot, and just uh, stir that around together. Now, into the steamer, over here, some Swiss chard, uh, or collard greens, if you prefer, or curly kale. I mean, a good green vegetable to go along the side. And now, just stir in the arrowroot, and it's boiling away here and just push it to one side a little and stir it in. I mean, just slosh it in and stir it up and immediately, look what happens. It clears in an instant and looks phenomenal. Fantastic, cooks out straight away, no trouble. Then a couple of pieces of the turkey just, just dropped on the plate like so and some Swiss chard. <laughs> we give it two minutes, but isn't this gorgeous? Look at that. Look at that. And then just a little bit of, the, of these vegetables, which are, I, I promise you, the most gorgeous thing you have ever tasted. Just slipped on the side of the plate there. <gasps> Great. Let's have a look and see how it compares with the other one, you know, with the main dish. And we always compare things with a classic. So that is the dish there, a friendly turkey, and this is compared with a a sort of creamy turkey uh, finished, you know, um, one, one, one of the great dishes, but uh, has only 422 calories, actually. Um, but we've got one here at 443 because of all the vegetables in it. But just look what happens to the fat, down to four grams, one of which is saturated, which gives me 9% of calories from fat. That's why it's friendly, apart from it's delicious. 53 of cholesterol, 517 of sodium, and 9, a socking great. That's, that's my world record in fiber, up to 9. Okay, now, just, you can pour a little of that juice from, from the potatoes here on top of that, but... <sighs> That's as good as you will ever taste. Really wonderful. Get the
turkey out just at the point of which it's cooked and it's just full of juice and the steam of all of the herbs coming up there. And crisp chard, well, it's almost like a sort of wilted salad, but great stuff, okay? So do this for those that you love. Don't forget, please them as well. It's such an important thing with good food. Thanks for being with me once again. God bless you. See you next time.